time now for the News Nation political postscript, the budget edition. The bipartisan budget deal passed overwhelmingly by the House yesterday now moves to the Senate where it is anything but a slam dunk. Our first read team is calling yesterday's House vote a big win for Paul Ryan and for Speaker John Boehner, who this week publicly challenged conservative groups who opposed the bill. We've been at each other's throats for a long time. Look, I was part of the last presidential election. We tried defeating this president. I wish we would have. Elections have consequences, Mr. Speaker. To really do what we think needs to be done, we're going to have to win some elections. And in the meantime, let's try and make this divided government work. Why conservatives wouldn't vote for this is, or criticize uh, the bill is, is beyond any recognition I could come up with. If you recall, the day before the government reopened, uh, one of the people at one of these groups stood up and said, well, we never really thought it would work. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> there just comes to a point when uh, uh, some people step over the line. You know, when you, when you criticize something and you have no idea what you're criticizing, uh, it undermines your credibility. And joining me live from Capitol Hill, NBC's Kelly O'Donnell. So, Kelly, already we know there's a no from Bob Corker, Lindsey Graham, Kelly Ayotte, John Cornyn. Uh, we have a couple that are leaning no, Jeff Flake, Pat Toomey, John Thune, Richard Shelby, and quite a list of undecided Senate Republicans. Well, one of the functions of the Senate is that you don't really have to commit until you have to commit, mm -hmm. meaning the time for the vote. So part of what may happen is that senators are really engaged in what's been going on separate from the budget deal. A lot of energy has been spent in the fight over nominations and the rules change. And so I think we will see from talking to a number of senators today, they're taking time to review it, think about it. They go home now for the weekend. They're back on Sunday and they'll work some very long days next week when they will have to find finally commit to this. What we may see is a split where some Republican senators will vote to allow the budget deal to move forward, one of the key procedural steps, and then vote against it later. So in talking with senators here in both parties, there's an expectation the budget deal will pass. One of the challenges is which Republicans will be on record supporting it at a time when, unlike in the House where Paul Ryan was the leader of this, in the Senate it's Patty Murray, the Democratic senator from Washington, who is one of the more progressive senators. So she doesn't have the same alliances with Republicans trying to bring them along as Paul Ryan did in the House, where he could ask his friends and colleagues to join him in this mm -hmm. and have some of that personal uh, sway. I had a chance to spend time with Marco Rubio, one of the Republicans who is against this. And when you heard Speaker Boehner talking so much about those outside groups, remember how Marco Rubio went through a difficult time over immigration where he was going for the bipartisan deal with those outside groups. So here's a piece of my conversation with Marco Rubio. Rubio as it relates to this budget deal. Do you think the outside groups have gone too far? Well, I don't even, I've been following what the outside groups are saying on this issue. We've got a lot of issues going on here in Washington. It's a free society, and I've been on both sides of outside groups supporting what I'm doing and against it. This isn't about the Tea Party. This isn't about me or Paul Ryan or Speaker Boehner or outside groups. This is about the United States of America, about a government that continues to borrow 20 cents out of every dollar that it spends at an alarming pace. So that issue for conservatives has really been about increasing how much the government spends. That makes them uncomfortable. They fight against that. Right. And then there's the argument for trying to do something that keeps the lights on and the process moving forward. So is compromise in the air? It's going to take a little while longer from the Senate side to see if that resolves itself. Okay, Tamar? thank you very much. And um, from the battle in D.C. to a battle of a different kind, but still one we've been following. This is a story a lot of you have been reacting to on Twitter and Facebook. A young Florida boy with autism and his parents fighting to keep the pet chickens that have helped the boy deal with his uh, autism. Now, after originally ruling three-year-old J.J. Hart could not keep his pets, the DeBerry City Council now says it will vote. It will vote on a special rev resolution next week uh, that would allow J.J. to keep his pets. Now, the family attorney says the change of heart came after he threatened to sue the city in federal court. And joining me now is J.J. with one of his pet chickens, I understand whose name is Snow, his parents, Ashley and Joe Hart, and their attorney, Mark Nation. Thank you all for joining us. 
Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Ashley, let's start off with you. I'm just going to tell you, and I said it before, I was like, JJ needs to keep, if we needed to get signs to help him, we wanted to see him keep his pets. Because you spoke from your heart when you said that you saw a change in JJ after the pets. What was his condition like before he got Snow and his other pets? Well, before he got Snow and his other pets, he was um, made minimal. He had very bad social skills. Um, Was in intense therapy um, with joint compression, um, brushing. Um, just he he needed a lot of help, um, and his therapist did a great job of, of that. But the chickens were something that we could do at home, and we like to say that it really helped bring him out of his shell. It got him running around. <laughs> um, it got him active, sitting, crouching, standing, jumping. Um, his sounds that he would mimic. He started mimicking chickens. And I know that sounds crazy, but it encouraged him with his speech. Yes. And um, his first word was. Well, Joe, how did you guys find out that, that chickens would help? I mean, were you just looking for a pet and stumbled across this idea? How did you come up with this one? <laughs> well, I'll let Joe answer that. It, there was an obscure, it was just a website I found, and it said something about chickens. And at the time, he was going through um, uh, sensory um, therapy and they would sit there and scrub him with um, brushes and stuff because he didn't like anything touching his skin mm -hmm. he didn't even like a blanket at night because he was sensitive to his skin being touched and he, still to this day he still doesn't like his get a chicken and see how how he reacted to yeah. it and I heard that there was advantages to it so we got a chicken and <laughs> He took to it. Well, well, Ashley, how did this turn into an issue for the city council? Were there neighbors who complained? How did the city council get involved? Um, it came from one complaint. Actually, it was, was it two complaints, Mark? It may have been two. It wasn't neighbors because mm. we've got petitions signed by all the neighbors wow. who are uh, very uh, supportive and of JJ. The only thing that it said was chickens. It didn't say loud or noisy. Yeah. It just said chickens. And, and you keep these pets, and we showed the video, in a clean, contained area. They're not running around loose, and, and it, it looks very secure. That's right. So we at live, the, Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, we live on an acre, and there's a, a fenced-in enclosure, and then they sleep in a coop, which they're locked up in every night. And Mark, we, again, the city council is expected to vote on this special resolution next week, but um, you believe this was only after... There was a petition of support from neighbors in the community, and obviously the family's been very open uh, about um, JJ having autism and, and the change that this has made in his life. Yeah, I can't answer why the uh, city chose to make the decision that they did, but uh, what we presented to them was uh, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine when I first got the case, I didn't know anything about chicken therapy <laughs> right. for autism, but <laughs> it's a great treatment. Yeah. So we uh, hired a world-renowned epidemiologist who wow. came in and presented all the studies, medical information, and a video. Therapy, it's worked, and the Federal Fair Housing Act requires municipalities to grant an exemption to people with special needs mm. uh, if, uh, if it's needed. In this case, it's needed. We're encouraged by the resolution. I don't think they would have uh, put it up for uh, a vote this coming week if they didn't have the votes, yeah. didn't know that they had the votes. So we're confident that they have the votes to allow um, Ashley Joe and JJ to keep the chicken, right? I, I, th they, they would not have put it up okay. for a vote if they didn't have them, I don't think. And if it doesn't pass, then we always have the alternative file suit, and that is exactly what we do. Wow. Well, Ashley, I've got it. I mean, you're sitting here. You've got this wonderfully uh, adorable child. Everyone in here, when we first saw um, JJ's face on screen, oh, and I'm also equally impressed at how disappointing. JJ the chicken whisperer, how did you get this animal to sit so calmly with him? Well, um, <laughs> it just comes from being handled on a daily basis oh, and wow. 
JJ's routine is he comes home from school, he goes out and he handles his chickens. Wow. Um, in addition, we have snow, um, cinnamon, and ginger <laughs> at home. Um, and he plays with them and uh. he feeds them and sits with them. Um, JJ's not the only one. JJ's the one that's been heard about the most. Yeah. And you can you can find him on our Facebook page, uh, Save JJ Hearts Ducks. Okay. But there's a lot of other people that around. now it's amazing well it is phenomenal um, that you've spread the word about this therapy that to your point a lot of people have never heard of and mark will see what the city council decides but uh, certainly a lot of people are supporting we heard from people um, Ashley and Joe on Facebook on Twitter I'm sure you've heard as well from all of these people from around the country supporting you and who believe in what you're trying to do which is essentially give your child the best life possible so thank you so much for your time and we can't wait to uh, see how this all plays out and JJ with his chickens forever so thank you thank you thank you, thank you. all right well still ahead